weekend, you'll be traveling to Atlanta. Hopefully you don't have any travel issues. Like, you know, I saw your, uh, your, your bags got left at the airport and you had some things going on on social media. No, actually, like I'm good. Like I haven't had any issues. Um, okay. Fabe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, uh, I have, I've been good. Like there's, there was uh, that big storm that came through and uh, over the holidays, me and a girlfriend uh, who are both into witch culture, we decided to just get up and drive down to Salem, Massachusetts. We were going to fly, but some issues with uh, her vaccine status. So, but no, no, I've, I've had no travel issues. Oh, what was up with the, uh, I want to get to Salem, but the, uh, the videos, your hostage videos. Oh, were, that- that's why I said kayfabe. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm good. It's good I, to see uh, your back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know what? It's traumatic, traumatic uh, PTSD. Like, uh, I'm blocking all that out. I'm good. I'm good. We're not talking about that. Okay. Uh, but no, back to back to Salem. Uh, that was pretty cool. Um, you're very much into witchcraft, the occult. That's like, a, a, you know, a big destination for that. Um I want to do it eventually. So like how, how big is like the town? Cause everybody's like, Oh, Salem, it's like this huge place, but it's probably kind of like Cooperstown in baseball where it's almost like, you know, very concentrated and. Yeah. I, by the way, I like your shirt. I just noticed that. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's really consolidated. Um, that was my girlfriend, Michelle's second time there. You could do it all easily in a day. Uh, like we, we literally did one overnight. We arrived at seven o'clock cause it was roughly with stops, 10 hour drive from Toronto. Mm-hmm. And, um, we arrived at seven, we did a few things in the evening and then we did a full day till about three o'clock and then got back in our car and we did everything we wanted to do. Like all the historical stuff. We had a tarot reading, um, I had my aura photo done and it's, you know, I, I would say do two overnights max, otherwise you'll be bored. And the food is amazing. The people are beautiful. Um, and everything is in walking distance. If you stay at like a local hot- hotel, we stayed at the Hawthorne mm-hmm. and that hotel was born, uh, built in 1925. And it was like, it's such a magical place. You have to go. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure out how to work in like stopping in Boston and going there on the way up. So it's hopefully yeah. it's in the cards this year. Cause I definitely want to check it out. You'd love it. Uh, another thing that was kind of going on the last time we talked, uh, you returned, you said you're back. Uh, I know I'd asked about your sort of on-air transformation, which yes. we're starting to see is kind of in effect. Um, uh, what, has what's the reception been like to that because obviously i mentioned you know impact fans know you as you know taylor on air but then social media is kind of a different beast where maybe they don't follow your personal life as much or maybe they do like i don't know how much of uh you know how much they follow over to the tv and vice versa but what's that been like the reception because i know it's something that's very personal to you and you know your, your your impact allows their talent to you know have creative freedom so what's that been like it's been interesting um i'd say for the most part positive uh you know i've spent my entire career as a squeaky clean taylor wild baby face so you know change is always going to elicit making people uncomfortable but that uncomfortability is, you know, what allows people to grow, allows for character development. And like you said, a lot of people who have followed my career and they follow me on social media, they know that this is really who I am as a person. And, um, you know, this is me turned up to a thousand and it's me living, you know, my 14 year old dream of watching the craft one too many times and really getting to embrace uh, that character and that side of my divine dark feminine personality and it's fully a journey of my growth as a person so it's not just a character it's who I am and where I am in my life uh, I always think when you're doing well and you're making a splash you're always going to get your quintessential haters but to me I love haters because that means I'm doing something that's me making people talk love me or hate me you're still talking about me so thank you um 
And, you know, you're, you're never going to impress everybody. Uh, you know, there's always going to be the people that we say, you know, we, we liked you as you were. Well, that's great. And I liked me as I was at that time in my life. But this is about growing and this is about taking risks. And I would say for the most part, people love it because it's authentic and you can feel it. You can see it. Like I really feel different and Mm -hmm. it's cool for me. So it's uh, like I said, you're never going to impress everybody, but I would say from my brothers and sisters backstage to the audience, people seem to really enjoy the change. Yeah. And it's different too, because, you know, you, you had this chapter in your career where you played, I think you said the the squeaky clean. I, I almost said all American, but obviously that's not exactly <laughs> accurate. It was advertised that way. I was the all American Canadian. It was very confusing. See, now that would have been a gimmick, the all American Canadian. <laughs> Somebody still wants to maybe grab that. Yeah, but it's it's up for grabs. Take it. We had an all American American. Maybe we have an all American <laughs> Canadian, but uh, I, I think the change is coming at the right time too, because hard to kill. They're going, leaning into a slasher theme, obviously, the Friday the 13th movies, even though it's not a direct connection, I feel like it's more, you know, kind of more like a a, a gradual, natural transition where it kind of allows you, you know, sort of the right theme. And then when it exists after the pay-per-view, it's still like, oh, it's this established, uh, you know, presence it's probably not the right word to say but uh it, you know it's established already do you have uh you mentioned the craft that's more supernatural but do you have any favorite slasher movies that uh come to mind whether it's jason or other you know i, I love all horror movies not specifically slasher uh i think anyone who grew up in that world of like a cult or witchcraft or counterculture, punk rock metal, you're going to appreciate a good horror movie. And I personally like being scared. It's probably because I'm naturally quite an anxious person. So I feel comfortability (laughs) being scared, but I've always liked more of the supernatural movies that embrace um, like the afterlife or the presence of spirits um, because I've had so many experiences. A lot of the time, it's not how I've experienced it, but it almost makes me feel a bit of solace. Like, oh, obviously they're taking this information from somewhere. It's not all fictitious, Mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, I like the darker movies, not so much the slasher films. Okay. Uh, I have to watch Barbarian soon. I have it. Like I, I bought it and it's in queue, but uh, a lot of people keep telling me to watch that. Uh, it's not supernatural, but I liked old. Yeah, that was pretty good, even though. Yeah, that's a great one. I like that. I like kind of like the message behind it. Um, yeah. As long as it honestly, as long as it's not like a torture porn hack them up. <laughs> yeah, totally. Like, as long as it's not that I don't really gravitate towards those but i like i like being scared i like the the spooky stuff yeah oh you know what truthfully i guess probably because there's the uh punk rock metal meets horror i did like house of a thousand corpses uh because of rob zombie Uh, i probably wouldn't have been so aligned with it if it wasn't for rob zombie but i did like uh like that's very, the, the story is very similar to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So if I had to choose one, that would probably be the one I like the most. Yeah. Uh, I like the think piece of it. Yeah. And I think uh, Devil's Rejects kind of aged really well too. Agreed. I haven't seen the, the third one, which I, I, it, I don't even think it was advertised very well, but it was like something three of, I don't know what the name was, but it was about that family but you know as far as like devil's rejects goes i think it aged really well uh wrestling connection you had ddp in it yes billy ray snapper so uh i don't know we got quite a a gallery of spooky and (laughs) flasher punk rock all kinds of things going into hard to kill Uh, but i do want to talk about your match your Mm -hmm number one contenders match for the impact knockouts world championship. It's it uh, started as a Mm three-way 
Uh, now you have Killer Kelly content- to contend with. Mm-hmm. Uh, some heavy hitters in this. Uh, we have Taylor Wilde, Deanna Prazo, Killer Kelly, and Masha Slamovich. Uh, I think this match really highlights the depth of the division. Uh, I feel like anyone could come out of this the winner. I think it's a strong contender, no matter. I mean, obviously, I'm talking to you. I want, you know, <laughs> I want to win, but uh, no matter how it goes down, I feel like there's going to be a strong contender for the title. I mean, uh, how that plays out, like that's another story between uh, Jordan and Mickey. There's a lot on the line there. What's it been like uh, for this run with you? I mean, you you have six names that I just mentioned, and there's others. You, you have Tasha Steeles that just re-signed, Savannah Evans, uh, Alicia. What's it been like, you know, just – getting to work with these ladies, seeing uh, the the sort of depth, the stories you can tell um, this time around? It's the best, honestly. Like I, it's not even being biased because I've always had like Impact, TNA will always be my home, but it's always because the knockouts have always been the most diverse group of female professional wrestlers. And they always push the envelope and it forces other major companies to raise the level of talent and diversity that they have on their shows. So one thing I really am experiencing uh, with this different character, uh, being at this point in my career where I'm more of a veteran, I've been a little bit more established, I get to be a little bit more of this methodical character and this methodical wrestler because I have a lot of mat skills and I have a lot of submission skills and I can ground and pound, but I've always done like the more high fly kind of like super energetic, which I love. It is very much part of who I am because I trained very aligned with Lucha Libre. I spent some time in Mexico, Uh, but you know, the older I get, the more I'm like, you know, it's, it's cool to stay on the ground and it's exciting. You can still make a match exciting working with actual mat wrestling, with submission styles and being a bit of a hard hitter. And it's more aligned with my character. And with the match going into Hard to Kill with Diana Perrazzo, Masha Slamovic and Killer Kelly, you have women that can all do all those different styles of wrestling. You know, it's not like the brunette versus the blonde. It is very talented, very diverse women. And I completely agree. Like, I also would like to come out on top, but we've got four really strong contenders. We're all hungry. We're all gunning for the same thing. And it's anyone's match at this point. Uh, No matter who wins, I don't think I'd be wrong to say that I feel like all four of you may challenge for the title by the end of the year. So I think that's, you know, another strong point as far as talking about the depth of the division obviously Mm -hmm. you want the title shot and the title sooner than later but (laughs) i think uh you know masha already got a match with jordan came up short i think she's hungry you know you're gonna be hungry you haven't held the title in a lot in a little bit um diana wants to retire mickey whether that whether those things happen and you know she We'll see, but there's a lot going into this weekend. Uh, after that, obviously, you want the title shot, but anybody else you're looking forward to working with? I, I, I mentioned like seven or eight names, but anybody anybody else? Yeah, I want to. I want to be in the ring with every knockout because this is all a new generation for me. Uh, I've had my chance with Mickey. That was amazing because her and I have always had these parallel careers. We've never crossed paths. So being able to do that in an impact ring meant the world to both of us, truly. And uh, it was great the way it ended up because we're still kind of allies. And I haven't been in the ring with Tasha Steeles. I haven't been in the ring with Killer Kelly. The the whole knockouts division, uh, I did, you know, a tag match with Deanna, but I feel like her and I could run a really strong storyline. And uh, every single knockout has something different to bring. I just had my singles match with Masha. She's incredible. Like if if I would say, you know, if there's any up and comer, even though she's had an established career, she really is someone to contend with. And, uh, you know, she's, she's a freaking psycho. 
she's she's really great at what she does but she really is a psycho and i love that because i'm a little bit crazy so i feel like there's there's more there uh but yeah bring bring it on i'm uh i'm here for a a, a good time not a long time so you know let's get to it we all get a, we all go a little crazy sometimes right <laughs> uh on this run since you've been back uh is there a match that you would maybe say highlights what you're trying to do as a wrestler now or maybe one that you feel was the most complete match that you've had so far Mm -mm. because I think every match tells a different story every uh depends where you are in a storyline and uh I think it's just going to keep building you know what I mean like I can't it's so new. I've really had two matches as this character. So I feel like we're just getting started. Like I'm just warming up. Okay. Yeah. It, it's sort of, uh, it's been fun to watch the evolution because you came back uh, at ba bound for glory and the big moment was the was up. And uh, <laughs> now here you are doing something drastically different. Uh, so, you know, it, it's an evolution. We'll keep watching, but I, uh, I'll do the song. That's not, <laughs> it's not my question. Uh, it, it's not a question. I'll, I'll, I said I would do it. I'll do it. Uh, today is going to be the day that they're going to throw it back to you. <laughs> right now, you shouldn't somehow. <laughs> it's amazing. I'm so proud of you. I you sung. All right. Uh, <laughs> hard to kill Friday, January 13th. Uh, Taylor Wilde fun as always uh hopefully we do this again uh i don't know i got the singing out of the way so we'll have more fun next time and uh you 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 might be the knockouts champion by the time we talk again so who knows look 2023 you sang new year new you i'm so proud of you